वेलकम बैक टू येट अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ लक्स इन साइड विद मी योर होस्ट अनिता खत्री Last week saw luxury Swiss watchmaker Patek Philippe collaborate with the iconic jewelry brand Tiffany and Company. This was like closing 2021 with a blue bang. Patek Philippe dropped a new Nautilus reference 5711 which will be the last of the coveted model that was discontinued earlier this year with a dial in Tiffany and Company signature blue. The collection is limited to just 170 pieces at approximately 52000 US dollars which is equivalent to rupees 40 lakhs if only this was available in India nevertheless for those traveling to America you can get your hands on the pieces in New York San Francisco and Beverly Hills moving on a team of Japanese scientists have created masks that glow when exposed to traces of coronavirus the masks begin to glow when exposed to ultraviolet light if they contain traces of the coronavirus which is achieved by using ostrich eggs the glow results from antibodies extracted from ostrich eggs fluorescent dye and the face shield's innovative detection system These glow masks are awaiting government approval and are undergoing further testing until they can be put into practical use. Now, moving to the focus of this week's episode. As per various historical records, India was referred to as Sone ki Chidiya. Our obsession with gold and all that shines and glitters is inherent. right from childhood to weddings to heirlooms this week i'm joined by rajiv popli the director of the popli group established in 1927 jewelry designs by the popli group have been loved and adorned by indians for over 90 years rajiv is a third generation jeweler who's passionate about designs and colors He expresses himself not only through gemstones and metal but also through oil and canvas. I spoke with Rajiv to learn about Indian jewelry consumers, who they are, how informed they are on various certifications while buying jewelry and so much more. Let's hear straight from Rajiv. What does luxury mean to you? Luxury is the way we live. Uh, I feel our lifestyle is is a way of luxury. Though it's a very relative term and you may have different interpretations to it. Something that puts a smile to your face I feel is luxury enough today. We've got connotations of this to put into monetary statements but uh, still I feel the end result is the smile on your face. So basically um whether it's jewelry or it's watches if it gives you a smile or it gives you happiness that's luxury so it could be anything for anyone at any time you know you have been veteran in fine jewelry industry you're also dealing with some of the coveted watch brands now you have observed this indian customer uh, consuming jewelry and watches but in last decade Have you seen this consumer changing and if you have seen this consumer changing how have you seen him changing him or her So when we look at luxury on the whole internationally we are in the luxury industry per se uh, though jewelry in India was the dominant product category in the luxury business uh, nevertheless worldwide uh, since we've been doing retailing in Dubai and other places Uh, worldwide the luxury category is a very large category and jewelry of course is a core aspect to it the category also includes other accessories like watches and uh, peripherals which are part of the luxury industry on the whole in india a jeweler is identified separately and a watch retailer identified separately that's how it's always been uh, unfortunately that doesn't happen anywhere in the world but nevertheless uh, that's the structure of retail in india because jewelry being such a large uh, consuming category 
being the largest, uh, one of the largest retailing product categories for the country and also worldwide as the largest gold consuming country. Uh, it, it automatically creates a dominance in the, in the retail segment itself. Last 10 years, of course, we've seen an amalgamation of the two happening. Like we've been into the watch industry now for more than uh, 17 years, precisely. And we've seen this amalgamating happening on the category where the jewelry and watches have come on the same floor. And more categories have added to this luxury per se uh, retail aspect. And uh, it's, it's taken at par as we would do it in Dubai and other cities. So the Indian consumer also has matured in the same manner where he demands from the same retail space a variety of product categories, which is where the, uh, you can say, maturity of the retail demand has come in. And the consumer wants to buy the wedding shopping uh, at one point of place, which is the jewellery to the accessories, which all go in the same wedding bouquet. So that's, that's the change which has happened primarily in the Indian consumer. Also, what's important is that the quality of retail in India has improved which has helped us, you know, offer the same product category to the Indian consumer sitting in India itself, which normally he would have uh, flown overseas and bought products uh, to fill in the requirement. But today the Indian consumer is walking down to a jewelry store or a watch store to buy the other products also, which otherwise would not have been bought in India. So which is a positive aspect from Indian retail point of view that we are able to cope up with the same quality of service as we're doing overseas with the other uh, retailers across the globe. So which is an important aspect for Indian consumer uh, having appreciated that and the Indian retail which has uh, matured to that level to offer the same service as overseas. So this is what we've seen for the past decade, uh, the changes has happened. I totally agree with you on this, Rajiv, uh, because, uh, uh, yes, uh, until 2000, I would say, and only after 2005, things started changing when it came to consumption of watches. Otherwise, watches were primarily purchased abroad or uh, while you're traveling. And uh, what you say to me that this uh, consumer has changed and has been comfortable in uh, spending under one roof, the wedding shopping, which is jewelry and watches at the same time. How would you see the Indian millennials changing when it comes to jewellery? Have you seen or observed that, you know, demand for, say, certain uh, certain category of jewellery or certain pieces or certain designs? I do not know, not really designs, I would say. How do you see millennial now asking for jewellery? Did you see any change there? So, particularly in the millennial category that we see... Uh there's a lot of self-demand which the millennials are having on their own. Unlike uh, their previous generations where the bride would be brought to the store and I would imagine my father showing them the jewelry and the, the in-laws or the mother or the father would be deciding on what is to be bought. Today, it's totally changed. I think they take a back seat and the, the bride and the bridegroom take the front seat. Uh, they are the ones who are demanding exactly what they need to buy. Uh, they, they are very focused and very clear as to what their purchase products need to be and how it is to be utilized down the line also because that's that's where they come into the utility aspect. Uh, also, importantly, they don't have a, a, a say whereas locker jewelry shopping is concerned. You know, They're not concerned in the locker jewelry shopping. They want jewelry which can be flaunted uh, whenever required and to be used as frequently as possible. That's the agenda basically in mind from a millionaire shopper, which is very good in a way of uh, a focused buyer is concerned from our point of view. So we, we know exactly what the consumer needs and what's their uh, utility on the product, which otherwise would have been a vague scenario, you know. So in the previous generation, you would buy X tolas of gold and that's your, your kitty for the shopping, you know irrespective of whether it's going to be used down the line or not, but that's the investment or that's the chooser or shopping which has been put as a kitty aside, but not the case anymore. So design is a core aspect from the millennium consumer. Uh, they exactly have, they've probably surveyed it worldwide with their uh, scope of uh, uh, social shopping that otherwise happens, their choice making happens, you know. So they're pretty crystallized, I feel, uh, as to what their demand is now. So, Rajiv, what you're saying is that, uh, um, you know, a decade ago, 
you know, jewelry would have been bought from the investment point of view. Today, it's more that they would like to use it and wear it often, as often as they can. So maybe uh, design, of course, plays there because then if you're wearing uh, jewelry on a daily basis, it need not be as heavy as it would be to be kept in a locker. That's one part. And the second very important part that you mentioned to us is that, um, you know, your consumer itself has, your customer has changed. So it's no longer that you are speaking or communicating to the older generation, that's mother and uh, father or, or the in-laws. You are actually communicating to the youngster who's the bride and the groom. You know, uh, it would be great if you could tell us your customer, this is the millennial, is he already, he or she, aware of the certification hallmark? Are they already aware of this, that they should be demanding this? Uh, yes, the Indian Kabilian consumer has been uh, socially connected to various brands internationally uh, through various channels of network. So, for example, if the Indian consumer, the Millennium consumer is looking for a wedding band, they're looking for hypothetically a Tiffany band or a Cartier or a Bulgari band, they understand what are the USPs of these brands per se, apart from the brand name. So it's the quality of the product, it's the certification which they offer, it's the consistency of the product quality which is coming to the Indian, to any consumer around the globe. If I, as a Poplay brand, can offer the same uh, uh, qualities to the product, then I might par with those brands. That is how the consumers understand it to be. And we are glad to be offering the same categories of quality and service to the Indian consumer in the same manner. So this is what uh, is our communication across, you know. So your customer is already aware of all this existing. So obviously he's he or she is well aware of Tiffany, Cartier and what they actually... Uh, they, so there, there, would, there would be times you would get uh, requests for many cons customers asking you to design something looking similar to Cartier or to Tiffany? I don't think so. Replicas is a is a concern. We have enough of designs that we create of our own. And more importantly, it's not that we replicate products to the Indian consumer. We create it for the Indian consumer. But I've always learned selling hamburgers in India doesn't work. You know, you need to create an Indian model of the burger. So that's how I would see it in my jewelry also. The Indian consumer, though, needs the same quality, the same certification, but they need something which suits their lifestyle and their... Uh, uh, design uh, calibers, you know. So that's how we suited to their Indian consumer requirement. Great. Uh, uh, I go back again, Rajiv, when you mentioned about investment, jewelry being bought for investment. Now, if, you know, uh, you, you also are into art, uh, if you had to choose to invest between jewelry, watches and art, what would you give your feedback or share your advice with our listeners? It's, it's too too relative a subject. I would say, what's your requirement per se first? Uh, don't keep the investment into the locker and be happy about it. I would see what would be your area of cherishment. If you have a nice wall in your in your living room and you would like to have a nice uh, uh, Raja Ravi Verma artwork on it, I would be more than happy you going for one. Nevertheless, if there's a good necklace, probably a platinum necklace which you feel has a good design element which connects to you, go ahead and take it. You know, So that's how I would see uh, a choice making to be done, which is very relative in a case of art and jewellery. And it's a very personal subject. So to me, art, is, art or jewellery is something that gives you a story. And if that story is understood uh, and reciprocated, I feel that's the best thing you should go for. How well said, yeah, Rajiv. I, I agree totally with you. Now, sustainability is something which you must have heard all over, and especially during lockdown. Uh, a, a lot of brands have uh, been, uh, you know, talking about it, going back, revisiting their uh, different uh, uh, sources from where materials, perhaps where they are sourcing from. Uh, they have tried to be as sustainable as possible. So is there anything that Popley's have uh, invested in towards sustainability? So we've always uh, we've always understood the blockchain basically uh, in our category of business that we are in. We've been responsible in our sourcing, which is a core aspect as uh, the genes of the brand itself is concerned. 
our sourcing has been with the entire study of the blockchain. Uh, so particularly with diamonds, if you have to understand, which always had a, a negative impact on so many other areas of channelizing the inventory. We work on the same Kimberley process, which is identified by United Nations years ago, and we've been keeping up to it, where the entire uh, sourcing of diamonds is is under the Kimberley process, which is uh, it's uh, blood-free diamonds. That's how we call it. So that's one area of uh, understanding the blockchain in the entire source. So is the case in gold. A sourcing of gold has been very crystallized uh, from our end. So it's it's very responsible the way that we buy, whether it's in India or overseas. Our entire format of business has been the same. Same case in watches. Uh, our sourcing has always been from the brands directly and not from the distributors or various channels that uh, the watch industry unfortunately was synonymous about in India. And uh, we've been happy to keep up with the same uh, down the line also. That's uh, uh, that's great to know. And, uh, you know, sustainability is here to stay. And especially when, you, you know, you referred or you mentioned and explained to us how your customer has evolved. Uh, millennials and Gen Zs, they are very, very conscious about, uh, um, you know, where is this product being sourced from? And how, what is the journey been, you know, where, where the life story has been. And that that's exactly what uh, brands are trying to, you know, um, work upon. And uh, we are happy that, you know, Popolis is already doing this for since long time now. At this moment, uh, what, according to you, is the latest trend when it comes to jewelry? Latest and the hottest trend in jewelry. Is there something which you would like to share with us? So what's what's important as jewelry is concerned has become very personal and very specific from a consumer point of view. There's utility-based jewelry which is bought. So there's jewelry bought for the wedding, for example. So there's a wedding band, the wedding uh, rings, which end up being in platinum because it's very personalized and that one piece of jewelry which they should you know, uh, keep up for years as a as a matter of memory. So that's that's where the trend is that platinum rings for weddings is the ultimate uh, subject today. And uh, that's become very important as a category. Then there's another set of jewelry, which is for the wedding day. Again, as I said, it's very specific demand oriented things. And these are customized. They are actually created from the consumer's uh, thought process. And in our case, since we are into backward integration of the product category, we can 3D print the design, we can create with the help of our designers exactly what the customer wants, suit it to the neck of the customer to the extent and even choose the gemstones which are required in the piece. So it's an entire customized bouquet which can be offered to that uh, choice-making customer. So this is the trend which is going on that the customization of the higher-end piece of jewelry, which is the bridal jewelry, is done. It's not bought typically over the counter. So this is where we come into picture that we have the capabilities of designing a piece from scratch, understanding the consumer. So our designers actually go on board with the customer to understand the moods, to understand the temperament of the client and then create a piece which suits the client's uh, personality also. You know, I recall those days, uh, uh, there was a time when uh, India was especially in the among the watch uh, brands, anything to do with gold, they would say it works in India. It was called primarily the gold market. And the uh, it's very heartening to know that, you know, there is demand for platinum because I remember even the Platinum Guild of India, they have uh, invested a lot to just educate people, uh, educate this end customer that how valuable and important platinum is. And I'm really, really happy to know this uh, this trend uh, that you were sharing with us. It's really, really very, uh, makes us feel very happy. In fact, in platinum, just to say, uh, in platinum particularly, just to say that uh, we were the first jeweler in the country to launch platinum in India uh, as a product category over the counter. In fact, six months even before officially PGI came into the picture. So with the help of Platinum Guild, we did test marketing in the year 99. And now it's 2021. So it's over 21 years that we've been selling Platinum in the country now. But, you know, would you say that uh, after 20 years, it is actually showing results now? I won't say that because I've got consistent growth for the past at least 15 years, if not more. 
uh, in the category and it's it's still a category which is growing irrespective of pandemic and no pandemic fortunately and it's 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 a category which is taken a serious space in the store today uh, so it's it's a category that which is important for our bottom lines and not just another product uh, as a fashion statement you know oh, so would you would you say that the customer who demands platinum versus gold is different is there a, a, a clear I demarcation or i i yeah yes i uh, i don't see the pro customer being different but yes the portion of shopping which happens in these categories for example like i said the wedding rings and the bridal rings is is a major chunk in platinum only so that customer is not one who i am trying to compete with gold it's a it's a customer who walks in to buy these bridal rings and the wedding bands in platinum and they would not compromise in any other manner than that means they are already aware or they already know that they want platinum that's it precisely that's why i said my my consumer here is very knowledgeable uh, they are already connected with the international world in a very major way and that's what helps us to introduce products which are newer in the indian scenario even though they have been there overseas we can always get them down to india because my customer relates to it very fast well thank you thank you so much rajiv and this really helps us to understand uh, this uh, customer taste and how customer has evolved from this last 20 years what is your most prized luxury item that you own as on today <laughs> oh that's it's a relative subject again uh, i i own some art pieces i own some good jewelry pieces especially the ones that i create i feel those are the ones i love <laughs> and do you have something on your list that you would like to uh, add or you aspire to add that soon to your existing collectibles uh some art pieces uh, i would love to own once i feel i can afford them uh, currently they're priced obnoxiously uh, but i'm always on the lookout if i feel i can get a hold of them at probably one of the auctions i would love to have them no specific artist as such uh math rothko is my favorite uh, i've always been looking forward to his artworks and uh, that's what i feel relates to me along with a few of dali pieces if i can put both of them together wonderful and in jewelry do you have any international jewelry that you uh, you really uh, appreciate or unfortunately i am very biased on my jewelry so uh when i feel like <laughs> uh i'm more of a creator so i i when i feel i can create it uh, then i might as well create it myself well thank you rajiv thank you so much for this uh, wonderful uh, enlightening uh, session and uh, we look forward to see you soon hear from you soon definitely definitely be my pleasure thank you make sure you subscribe to or follow this podcast wherever you are listening to it right now so you don't miss out on the next episode thank you for listening to this episode of lux insider i am your host anita khatri and i'll be back next week with yet another exciting episode